Hi everyone, it's Gina K from Gina K Designs and I'd like to welcome you back to another video. Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you how to create some gatefold cards with a twist. I'm going to be using the new Elegant Asters card kit, now available at GinaKDesigns.com. And before I get started, I want to give you a look inside this brand new kit. When you get your kit, it's going to come in a convenient storage box. And these little boxes are great to keep all of the components of your kit together. So you can enjoy weeks of stamping with me on my Stamp TV channel. Inside, you'll find a little sticker that you can break the seal and you can pull out all of the contents inside the box. And there's a lot of different components here. First, you have two stamp sets. The first stamp set is this large Aster's flower stamp set that has large, beautiful flowers, leaves, and some great sayings, along with a beautiful butterfly. And you have the Wishes mini stamp set that has the word wishes with lots of greetings. There's coordinating dies, and there are two word dies inside the package. And the dies come on a magnetic storage board for easy storage and it keeps everything so neat and organized. Then for cardstock colors, we have Wild Dandelion. You also get some of the Jelly Bean Green. And there's three sheets of each of these colors. Some of the Sea Glass, some of the beautiful Red Hot, and Sweet Mango. So that's a look at what's inside this kit. And now I'm going to show you how to make these gatefold cards. For traditional gatefold cards, you can take a piece of eight and a half by five and a half cardstock and start scoring on the two and one eighth inch line. After you make that first score line, then you can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Now what I recommend here is I recommend folding and then pressing down that seam using your bone folder or your scoring tool. For the other side, make sure the two seams line up perfectly. Then press down with your bone folder or scoring tool. This way, if it's a little bit off, by pressing those together, you make the perfect fold. The next step is to add a little texture onto this card front. So here I have a piece of the Gina K Designs Masking Magic. And I'm going to slip that Masking Magic on the inside of this gatefold card. So I have one half attached to one side and then I'm going to close it up using the other half. This way, when I ink up my front of my card, I don't have to worry if any ink seeps in between that seam. I'm going to ink up my gauze background stamp using some turquoise sea ink. And turquoise sea ink is a great complementary color to that sea glass cardstock. Now once I have that stamp inked up real well, I'm going to flip that card over onto its front and lay it right on the background stamp. Then I'm gonna take a piece of scrap paper and I'm gonna rub all over the surface, making sure that the entire front makes contact with the stamp. That's how to get a flawless look with a background stamp. Then I'm gonna open up that gatefold card, remove the masking magic, and I'm gonna keep that for the next step. Now I have my gatefold card opened and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this butterfly die onto one side of the front of the gatefold card and I'm going to lay it up to the center mark and it's easy to find the center on that butterfly because it's where the two wings meet and at the top where that little V is. And once you have it in place, take that same strip of masking magic and lay it on top of the die to secure the die in place. Masking magic is great for this technique because it won't tear the paper and it won't pull any of the ink off. So now once I have that in place, I'm going to put my top plate on and I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. Now once that's run through, I'm going to take it out 
and I'm going to gently peel the masking magic off. And even the masking magic, as non-tacky as it is, the pressure from the die cutting machine will still make it pretty stuck down. So just gently peel it off. And now you have half of your butterfly. Now to make the other half, close up the gatefold card, put the die back on top and just shimmy it into place until you feel it click down into the hole that you created on the left hand side and tape the die down into place on the other side and run it through the die cutting machine again. And once again, gently peel off that masking magic and you'll have a full butterfly cutout. You can see how perfect that is. So for the next step, I'm going to take that same masking magic and I'm going to tack my card closed with it. And this way I can add my die cut piece into the center and the card stays closed while I'm working with it. And again, masking magic does pop, it, it's not very sticky, so make sure you put a little pressure on it to make sure it sticks down. So I've already stamped this butterfly and colored it with Copic markers. And now I'm using the Gina K Designs and ThermoWeb foam squares. And I'm applying those onto the back of the butterfly. Now, if you've never tried the Gina K Designs foam squares, they're really awesome. And they also come in black. So if you're doing black elements on your card, they just disappear right into the cardstock. So now I'm going to lay this piece right inside that opening and just line it up and then give it a little pressure to make sure that all the foam squares are down and then I can remove that masking magic and you can see that the butterfly is now popped up but inside that window. So that gives it some really neat dimension. Now to close this card, I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs and ThermoWeb Black Gingham Fancy Ribbon. I love this ribbon for spring and summer cards. Nothing says spring and summer like gingham to me. It reminds me of picnic blankets and picnic tablecloths. Just gives me that warm feeling. And if you didn't know, our ribbon can be colored with Copic markers or Gina K Designs ink so you can have other colors with the gingham like yellow and black, red and black, turquoise and black. But I love the black and white for this card. Now as you can see, I tied a knot in it, but I've left the ribbon a little bit loose so it's not very tight around the card. This way it's going to be easy to slip that ribbon off and open up the card. So when your recipient gets it, they can slip that band off, open up the card, and then if they want to put the band back on, they just have to gently bend the card a bit and the band will slide right back on. I want to show you another card that I made using this same layout. And this one I did using a white card base and I used Sandy Beach for the gauze background. And on this one, I used the little mini wishes set. I stamped the word wishes and then I added birthday on top. So that turned that card into a birthday card. And it's easy to slip that belly band right back on by gently bending the card. Now here's another fun twist. For this gatefold card, my card measures four and a quarter inches by 11 inches, and I'm going to score at the two inch mark. Now once I've scored that line, I'm going to fold that over and press down that crease using my score tool. Then I'm gonna flip the card over and I'm going to score it at five and a half inches. Anytime you're doing a gatefold card, you can move the lines as long as your second score line is always at five and a half inches if you're doing a horizontal card or four and a quarter inches if you're doing a vertical card. This way you can put your seam between the two front flaps anywhere you want on the card. Now that I have the front flaps done, I'm going to use some more masking magic and I'm going to slip that piece of masking magic inside one side of my gatefold card. 
and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And again, that masking magic can be reused many, many times. But that just prevents ink from getting in the seam. Now the cardstock that I'm using is jelly bean green, so I'm going to use some grass green as the coordinating color. So I'm going to ink up the same gauze background stamp using some grass green. And then I'm going to lay the card face down onto this background stamp. I'm going to gently hold it and place it and put that scrap piece of paper on top and once again rub all over the surface making sure that the entire front of the cardstock makes contact with the stamp. And again, this is such an easy way to get good coverage from your background stamps. I'm going to pull out that masking magic and save it for another project. And now it's time to cut my gatefold card. So I have some of the aster flowers and some of the leaves already pre-cut and colored in with Copic markers. So I'm going to use the largest flower to make the cut into the gatefold card front. So I have the coordinating die and I'm going to place that where I want it and then tack it down with the masking magic. And I'm still using those same pieces of masking magic so they can be used over and over again. I'm going to put the top plate on and I'm going to cut out one half of the flower. Now for the flower, you really don't have to line it up in any particular place or any orientation. Just do what you like. Then I'm going to close up the gatefold card, snap that die into that opening on the left, and then tack it down over the front of the card on the right. The masking magic is going to hold it in place for me, and then I'm going to cut out the other side to complete my flower opening. Now once that's done, I'm going to very gently remove the masking magic Remember that it is on there pretty tight because the die cutting machine really puts a lot of pressure on it. And you can see that flower is perfect now. Here I'm going to drop it right in and you can see it drops in perfectly. So now I'm going to use some foam squares to pop this flower up like I did with the butterfly. And you can see I'm holding my card closed with some of the masking magic. Now I'm going to lay the flower in place and then press down on it and then I can remove the masking magic. Now instead of just doing the one image, I'm going to do a cluster of flowers and leaves. But one trick is that when you place your foam square, pl place it onto the cardstock, not onto the flower because you want to make sure that you don't actually stick it to that other flower or else the card won't open. So put your foam square down onto the card front and then you can add more foam squares that will go farther to the right of that first one. So now I'm going to put this second flower down and then I'm also going to add another foam square onto the front of this card for my yellow flower. And again, I'm going to lay this one right onto the green card base because I don't want to by accident end up having that foam square stick to the red flower. Now this flower is nice and small, so one foam square will work. And now I've added the rest of my leaves just by taping them on there. And you can see that whole cluster of flowers opens up around that big flower. Now here I've put a little belly band around there and you can just slide that off and open up your card and your greeting can be on the inside. And then when you want to replace the band, just give it a gentle bend and the band will fit right back onto the card. Now you can also use acetate for the belly band, you can use cardstock, you can use vellum, anything you want to create a band. Here on the inside of this card, I actually added some extra leaves and the words best wishes from the mini set in the Elegant Asters card kit. 
Now I want to show you how the word dies look on these gatefold cards. So what you can do is you can add a big word like this and you can glue it right down onto the front. Just make sure that you don't glue it past the seam. This way when you open up the card, it will still be on the card front, but it will be hanging over the edge. I also want to show you how cute the wishes die looks. And you can use this die with some of the strip sentiments from the wishes mini set that's also in the Elegant Asters card kit. So you can have birthday wishes or best wishes on top and leave the inside blank to write whatever you'd like. The Elegant Asters card kit is now available at GinaKDesigns.com along with our other beautiful new release stamp sets. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video and I hope you'll give some of these gatefold cards a try. Here are a couple other videos you might like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.